Okay, it's Sam with another weekly forecast. How did we all fare with the full moon in Pisces last week? Full moon in Pisces is always a personal favorite of mine. So let me know in the comments how last week went. And let's go ahead and we'll jump to this week, which starts out pretty slow, not gonna lie. And then of course, uh, stuff starts to move as we have both mutable and cardinal friction later in the week. So as always, I've posted the exact times below in the description for the video, but we'll go ahead and we'll go day by day, starting with Monday. Now, Monday, we have just one sextile aspect. Sextiles are the weakest friendly aspect that we have in astrology and the moon in Aries, which is going to give us a little bit of energy, a little bit of drive. Will sextile Saturn at 1.24 p.m. Eastern Standard. Nothing to write home about pretty easy day on Monday. One aspect, I can't remember the last day that we had one aspect in the skies. So really chill on Monday. Like moon and Aries will be encouraging some movement, but don't, don't push yourself too hard. As we move into Tuesday, we start to feel a little bit more of a speed up, but simultaneously a slow down. Uh, so Tuesday are two aspects. So moving from one to two, we have a little bit of an issue overnight on Tuesday as the moon in Aries makes a square to Pluto. This is going to disrupt sleep from Monday into Tuesday. So get to bed a little bit earlier on Monday and don't worry about the turbulence over on Tuesday because early in the morning, on Tuesday, we have the moon moving into Taurus, her favorite sign, the sign of the moon's exaltation, because the moon loves consistency and it loves ritual and routine and the senses and nature and all things that Taurus kind of represents. And that moon in Taurus is going to be really stabilizing for the rest of our Tuesday. So we have bumps overnight, but then the rest of Tuesday is just golden. Now, this is where we start to see earth energy creeping up, which is going to be a theme Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as Venus gets highlighted. So we're going to see lots of earth activity on Wednesday, and we're starting to get the, the tip of it on Tuesday as the moon ingresses into Taurus, giving us that fixed earth, that natural emotional stability to uh, kind of move into those earthy transitions later. So Wednesday is our busiest day of the week as far as aspects go earthwise, but we have much more happening on Friday, uh, which we'll get into in a second. Not to jump ahead. Don't jump ahead, Sam. Uh, but let's go ahead and move into Wednesday. So Wednesday, we have three back-to-back -back very strong Earth aspects. At 4.39 a.m. in the morning, the moon is going to trine Venus and Virgo. This is the moon in Taurus, Venus's other sign. Trining Venus, who's also in an Earth sign, giving us wonderful grounding, rigidity, order, alignment, management skills to kick off our day. Also, the moon will conjoin the north node in Taurus at four, at 10.48 a.m. Eastern. So the morning is going to be very goal-focused, very productivity-focused, laying down the bricks of our path moving forward, really painting the vision of the future that we would like to see. Absolutely glorious. Now, the third, the third Earth aspect is a little bit rough. Wednesday evening at 6.34 p.m. Eastern, we have the moon conjoining Uranus. Uranus is the planet of disruption. It is the planet of unpredictability. It is the planet of natural disasters. So although it is technically a helpful uh, aspect because we have a lot of Earth energy grounding us at the time, there will be this idea of constructive deconstruction is the best way to to put it, which I think Venus and Virgo will kind of oversee and help. Now, as we move later into the night on Wednesday, we do have just a purely frictionless aspect as the moon in Taurus makes a square to Saturn. So Saturn as Lord of rigidity, of restriction, does not appreciate the moon in Taurus's want to build, to indulge, to spread, to grow. Saturn says better to focus on the roots, better to focus on the foundation, better to focus on what you already have than to expand your territory. And the moon says, hey, we expand everything at once. We are in, we are in a growth phase earthwise, but Saturn doesn't necessarily agree. So we have some friction in the evening about whether to stay or to go, whether to prune uh, the cutting of Saturn or to flourish the kind of abundance of Taurus. And flourishing and pruning are a really great example of how 
Pruning is a necessary aspect in the garden in order to strengthen plants, in order to maintain proper shape, in order to conserve nutrients, to build literal organic growth for fertilizer. It helps when we are able to cut back on things that are excessive, right? Versus things that are naturally abundant, like fruits are really great until they attract all of the vermin uh, that want to kind of eat those fruits. Now, everything in nature has its place in its cycle, but Wednesday really reminds us of these deep deeper themes we're going to get into during the week about what is necessary versus what is fun and comfortable. Okay, but Thursday we won't really have to worry about that because we have more earth energy on the way. So as we get towards the end of this earth energy, we have a strong start overnight with the moon making a trine to the sun in Virgo. So again, Taurus Virgo, all this earth energy coming forward overnight helping us sleep very deeply, very well. In addition to the moon making a sextile to Neptune, we love to see that overnight because Neptune is the planet of sleep. Now, first thing in the morning on Thursday, as we get to 8.57 a.m. Eastern, the moon will make a trine to Pluto. Now, Pluto is the planet of the underworld, the past, and everything subconscious. So people will be kind of in their heads a little bit on Thursday. There's going to be this idea of people reflecting, people acting as if they are not present, but they are living from the past. So just be aware of that. And then for most of the day, we actually have the moon void, of course. So the moon will be in transition from Taurus, then moving into Gemini at 4.16 p.m. Eastern. But in between that time, we will be directionless. We will be void of astrological influence, which means that we can just kind of coast and not be interfered positively or negatively by the planets. Now let's move into Friday, which is the start of our cluster, uh, where we get into some not so fun aspects. As you can see on the screen, we're getting really strong streaks of red in that chart. And we begin early in the morning with some air energy overstimulating us overnight. And this is where kind of our nervous system gets to glitch. So the moon and Gemini will sextile Jupiter at 2.13 a.m. Eastern, which is a little bit too hot, a little bit too fiery to really let us sink into sleep. And then the moon will try and Mercury first thing at 5.35 a.m. Eastern, giving us a kind of just like mental stimulation. Uh, that's, that's also a lot to handle on a Friday morning, but we're up because there's a lot of things happening. Now, as we look into the other aspects, we have seven aspects on Friday. Uh, this is going to be a lot to process. So essentially what's happening is Venus, the sun, Mars, and the moon are all making simultaneous aspects on Friday afternoon. And what this means is that anybody with strong mutable sign placements, so we're looking at Virgo, Gemini, Pisces, and Sagittarius. Friday is going to be a very difficult day for you because all of the mutable signs besides Sagittarius will be making a square uh, formation. And this is going a square or an opposition depending. And this is gonna put a lot of pressure on the mutable signs. Venus squaring Mars, the idea of our traditional planet of yin and our traditional planet of yang, uh, the kind of feminine and masculine aspects of our skies going at it, butting heads, creating a square at 2.41 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be tricky. Uh, it's going to obviously butt a lot of heads, bring a lot of discourse. Not only that, but as we move into the evening, the sun in Virgo opposes Neptune. We already talked about Neptune being the planet of sleep, but it is also the planet when put in a hard spot, it tends to blur boundaries, it tends to over empathize, it tends to hyper connect in a way that is very much about creating illusion and disassociating you from what is rational. And so the sun in Virgo who wants to create rationality, who is all good about systems and structures earlier in the week, is now realizing that not everybody feels that way. And that's another layer of the disconnect that's happening. Now, Venus will make a strong trend to the North Node in the middle of all this at 8.09 p.m., which gives Venus in Virgo the ability to say, okay, now that shit has been identified, shit can now be corrected, 
right? We are now moving into reformative action where we are taking the nonsense that was the Venus Mars square and saying, okay, what do we do with this? What do we do with this conflict? How do we move forward in a different way? So Venus and Virgo at the front of the charge with solutions, we love to see it. But the moon is also going to be swinging through and echoing this by squaring uh, Mars and Venus at 8.51 and 9.17 p.m. Eastern, respectively. So it's going to be a very frictionous day on Friday. Please buckle your seatbelts. Please keep your hands inside the moving vehicle at all times and just enjoy the ride. Laugh it off. If you identify that Friday is going to be a problem area for you, if you have a large cluster of mutable signs, just know that we need to take that day very slow, very systematic. Do not blame others for the astrological influences. Yes, hold yourself and others accountable, but understand that there are energetic backings to a lot of the things that people will be doing or saying that are not going to be very helpful, and they'll regret the next day. Speaking of regret, let's talk about the regret that will be happening on Saturday. Okay. So moving into Saturday, we have first thing in the morning, the moon makes a trine to Saturn from Gemini to Aquarius. This is the solidarity and the solemnness moment. Like this is the heart recognizing it made an oopsie and Saturn is taking that corrective action and saying, hey, by the way, this is why we should have pruned. This is why we should have held back. This is why we should have cut this off at the quick and done the hard work ahead of time. Yeah. Then in the afternoon, we have two back-to-back -back squares as the moon makes a square to Neptune and then squares the sun in Virgo, lighting up what happened yesterday as a continuation. So we're still mulling things over, just like the moon swings through to echo the Venus-Mars square. Now the moon is swinging through to echo the sun-Neptune opposition. And this is why we're kind of in this pressure cooker on Friday to Saturday, even into Sunday as the cardinal signs get involved. It's going to be a much, a mucho cluster weekend and we need to just be respective of these astrological transits cooking and giving us a lot to think about putting a lot of friction in our path and reminding us that nothing is really safe in the middle of a world that is ruled by constant change yeah eventually you're gonna bump into something so moving into sunday the last day of our week thank goodness we started off so good. We had so much strength on Wednesday and Thursday with all of those earth sign aspects. And then we just devolved. Uh, and unfortunately, Sunday is no exception, but this time it's involving the cardinal signs. So whereas Friday, we had to be very, very careful if you have Gemini, Sag, Pisces, or Virgo in your chart, heavily aspected, your sun, your moon, your ascendant, etc. cetera. Um, everybody has those signs in their chart, but specifically if you have ma major placements there. Now on Sunday, we need to be very careful if you have cardinal aspects in your signs. The fixed aspects kind of get a pass. They're doing really well with all the stability and the rigidness of the earth sign. They're kind of laughing at the cardinal immutable signs, but or the, uh, the yeah, cardinal immutable signs. But as we move into Sunday, we have uh, the moon moving into Cancer, overnight, which will help sedate our morning and give us a nice start to Sunday. But then as the day progresses, specifically around 1.38 p.m. Eastern, 1.56 p.m. Eastern, and then in the evening at 6.22 p.m. Eastern, we have the moon squaring Jupiter, squaring Mercury, and then Mercury retrograde opposing Jupiter retrograde. So this is going to be a flashback to Friday, September 2nd over Labor Day, Labor Day weekend when Mercury originally opposed Jupiter. We're going to have a rehash of that same energy as Mercury retrogrades back to retrograde oppose the Jupiter. And this is just, it's divine comedy, people. It, it truly is divine comedy. Every week when I do this forecast, it's like, what is the telenovela this week? And I think that this is a perfect example. First, the mutable signs are fighting. Now the cardinal signs are fighting. So as we look at Libra, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn, just understands that the sensitive Cancer moon will be 
uh, in friction, in square with Jupiter and Aries who wants expansion. Jupiter and Aries wants to conquer all, to lord over all. And Moon and Cancer is like, um, what about feelings? What about connection? What about community, right? Jupiter and Aries doesn't freaking care. It wants to rule. Uh, Moon and Cancer square Mercury and Libra. Like Mercury and Libra wants balance, wants justice, wants safety. But Moon and Cancer wants everybody to feel good, which when we look at larger themes of justice and holding people accountable and balancing our actions via Libra, Moon and Cancer being soft and squishy and wanting everybody to feel good, sometimes justice has to come before that. Sometimes the, the true repercussions of karmic action and the things that we need to do to step up to the plate to defend ourselves are not soft, are not squishy, are not the most kind of compassionate. And so balancing those opposing forces. And of course, as Mercury and Libra opposes Jupiter, that's going to be the crux of it. And we're not going to see real resolution until next week as we get into some of the other aspects that will kind of clean that up, most notably the uh, Mercury-Sun conjunction. But that is the end of our week. I would really encourage everybody to stay safe on Friday and Sunday. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments of the video. I'd be happy to go back and forth as far as answering those for you, as well as if you're looking for more of a day-by-day -day breakdown or some kind of bullet point horoscopes if the whole astrology thing is not uh, is just too confusing for your head. I know it is like another language. Trust me, I get it. I feel like I'm babbling at you half the time. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in my name, Sam Bellier, and it should come up. I think it's Sam Bellier 92 on Facebook and then Sam Bellier 333 on Instagram. And I do the daily posts that are a little bit more digestible. But that is your week in a nutshell. Have a fantastic week. Let me know how you're doing and may the stars be ever in your favor.